Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound and this video I'm going to show you what we've done in this Audi A6 C7 I think it's around 2013 plate A6 estate We didn't have an introduction video of this because the equipment list wasn't magical there wasn't anything new in it let alone the fact that all the equipment came out of the Audi A8 we worked on in the last few years that car got sold and the owner sold all the equipment to his friend and that's how he ended up at our place. It was a quick one week's work, although we've put in nine and a half days labor into this build. I have to mention it at times, well, as, as much I can, you know, I always share how much work goes into cars because most people have no idea about what really goes into these systems. Uh, the idea with this one was to keep it relatively simple and practical. So here we go at the back. As I mentioned, the equipment came out of the Audi A8. So we have exactly the same kit. Probably if, if I had started a project like this for someone who's not a competitor, not a crazy audiophile, who just want a daily good sounding system, then uh, I would have chosen a few things differently, like not to have such a huge amplifier like that Audison. Of course, he got it for a good price, so uh, it's a no brainer to have a good amp. However, we could have had just a multi-channel amplifier, a DSP amp down there. We took the factory subwoofer out, the Bose sub that was here molded around the spare wheel and we could have had a lot of space on the side even underneath the spare wheel here there could have been space so a multi-channel running the components and a monoblock could have easily been hidden. As you can see there's a bit of deadening on spot you can see that the whole trunk was sound deadened you can see this from this picture um, throughout the whole floor, the sides the cavities were pretty well soundproofed by factory as well. All those empty cavities had fillings, stuffings, whatnot by factory. Um, the, the tire well was also really well soundproofed uh, from Audi. So there wasn't much to do there. We put a bit of deadening underneath uh, that side section. But other than that, we didn't have to worry too much about it. Because even the trim panels that go back are pretty thick, well insulated. And the car was relatively quiet even without any treatment. But as with any system, we we do extensive deadening to the trunk where you have the subwoofer most people have the subwoofer because we don't want additional rattle or anything coming alive and causing distraction um so we just built a sealed box over there that's a 0.9 uh, roughly 26 liter sealed enclosure everything made out of plywood but that sub can be taken out easily i will show you how it's bolted in it can be taken out and the trim panel can come out in literally in like 10 seconds as well so if the owner wants then he can still have that side the single seat side available for longer um, bits if he wants to you know deliver or take anything in the car so nice and simple we may add a mesh grill in front of the equipment we've, <laughs> we've run out of it to be fair but the car will have to come back for a little swap in the future so we will do that then but you know that trim panel is pretty protective and he has a lot of space here in the boot so still pretty practical from here i left the rear seat tipped so you can see where we have the rest of the equipment we have the positive fuse distribution block for two amps and the dsp then over there we have the ground monoblock for the sub the zapco st 500 xm2 and the zapco dsp for mark ii which has built-in Bluetooth as well, so we can stream to it directly what we are doing right now because the car still needs to be coded in order to utilize the most 25 box to run on that because the car didn't come with upgraded audio system from factory, it came with the base and it only currently outputs on the speaker levels. What we've integrated, but it doesn't sound great, to be fair, pretty simple, it sounds shit. Um, that little switch is for the lights, we didn't want to put it on the um, interior circuit because we don't want this car to be shouty when it's opened in a supermarket you know we don't want lights blasting out in the dark but if he wants to show it off then he can just turn it on and then he's got the lights at the back nice and simple nothing crazy that's why you can see two bolts that bought the enclosure um, to the rack so this way it's nice and secure there's a quick connector over there an xt90 and this way it's easy to take that box out if needed up front, well, there's not much to, to see. It's pretty similar to previous week's Audi, Audi, uh, the BMW 
M6. Everything is in factory locations. Mid base we have the Hertz Milli Legend 1800, I think that's the ML 1800. The slightly larger seven inch driver breathing into the door. The door was treated in and out everywhere. Door card was treated, soundproofed, and it's all right. It works okay. But if you want, you know, competition level performance, then you, you have to go extra mile because these doors are not rattle free, even after all the work that we've done. So that plays the mid base up front. And these cars come with a three way system or a two way system from factory. In this case, it was only two way and that was just a tweeter up on the top. That's where you would have a mid range in this car. There's nothing. Um, so there's not even wiring running to it. We could have made a proper freeway full OEM system in it, but as I said, the equipment was given, so we had to use what we had, so mid-base there, and then the 2-inch hybrid audio um, L2 SE widebands that I consider to be fair, one of the best 2-inch widebands currently on the market, someone can send me something else to try, but those drivers are beautiful, and they do a good job, they do a great job in the Audi A8 as well. I'm going to drop a link in the description then you can you can go and see the a8 as well we've done we've done quite many um stages in that probably the highest viewed video ever we have on youtube is actually from that car where i built a custom enclosure in the side cavity of the audi a8 not using any fiberglass only wood and my usual jigsaw puzzle technique and whatnot but yeah that two inch driver is right there we modified the grill I have another test video for that, so I'm going to share that too in the description, guys. You can find it there, where I compared how much improvement just simply cutting out that plastic and then speaker cloffing it over can deliver, especially if you have a wideband or anything playing high frequency range under that. You want to make sure it's not restricted. Everything here is factory. The only thing we added here is the controller for the DSP. That's where you have master level sub level we can go from 0 to 24 then you have presets we have two presets and then the inputs then it can go back to radio which is now not even playing yep but um as as simple as that as soon as you hit play on bluetooth though it takes over automatically so it's that easy to live with. As soon as the car coded, then we will be able to utilize the hedge unit uh, with optical output. Then that will have better quality for sure. And then that's it. It's all hidden. So nothing crazy, nothing exciting. But some of you who have Audis, then at least you get a bit of insight into what type of systems these cars can have. It's definitely better to have a wideband up there on the dash. But nothing else can fit there, only the, the hybrid Air 2 SE. Or maybe the unit two, maybe, but that has bigger magnet. Um, we made custom uh, brackets for those drivers for the Audi, and they literally dropped in here. Slightly different um, spacing because the driver is a bit further forward. Probably one quarter of it is hidden by the dash at the front, but at least it's co close to the windscreen. Um, so we're using the reflection of the windscreen, which is great in many cases. And that's pretty much it. Pretty much it about this simple setup let me know what you think of it feel free to share it and subscribe to the channel also i must mention that we have patreon um, an exclusive channel where we share way more content behind the scene content uh, rta measurements explaining how a system gets tuned how it, it comes together limitations of, of the setup in terms of acoustical um, responses things like that this car is going to have its rta session shared on Patreon too, to, to the time you watch this video, you should be able to go on Patreon and then see it, if you're a member of it. And uh, hopefully we can we can share something really crazy with you in the next video, because we have a awesome project coming up. So I'll see you in that one. Take care.